Hey guys, you know it's cold and it's wet out here in Louisiana today. It's 44 degrees. It's just a humid cold. So I'm going to go find something nice and warm to snuggle up to. Yep, that's what I'm talking about. The DPF filter. Diesel particulate filter. That's what we're going to talk about today. You know, it's a very simple gadget underneath the truck. I've heard all kinds of uh, theories on how it operates. Some people say, well, it runs every 30 minutes or it runs every hour or every 150 miles it comes on. And it doesn't work like that. It works off a of differential pressure. There's a line that uh, a sensing line on the front of it and on the back of it. And it just sim simply goes to a sensor which transmits to the ECM the differential pressure. And it's a very low pressure. And uh, it's a very sensitive uh, sensor. And so when the pressure gets to a certain point, it indi indicating that there is some soot buildup, it will go into an active regeneration. And it's that simple. And then it'll, the active regeneration will start and that'll start the process of heating up the exhaust and uh, t regenerating the, uh, burning the soot, and, uh, which, which is really not burning anything. It's a, it's a chemical process that's taken place from the diesel being injected into the exhaust system and uh, I believe they call it uh, oxidation. And because uh, you, you really don't want a fire in your DPF filter, That's, that, would, that would ruin the DPF filter. And God knows what else might blow the freaking truck up for all I know. But uh, that, that's one of the, the causes of DPF filter failure is an actual fire in the DPF filter. So when you, when normal, normal uh, regeneration will go up to about 1100 degrees and uh, that's as high as it'll go, but that's plenty high enough, and uh, that's Fahrenheit, and it'll and it will. Uh, there's that weird, strange noise my truck makes every once in a while, but um, it'll go up to about 1,100 degrees and it, at its peak, and it'll burn there for 20 minutes or so, usually between 9:50, and I, I can tell when it peaks out about 1,100. I know it's just about finished. But anyway, uh, let's crawl up under the truck and uh, get next to that nice warm DPF filter and take a look at those uh, lines and see what we can find out about that thing. Okay, so there it is in all its glory. There's the DPF filter. Okay, so you've got two sensing you've got two sensing lines on the DPF filter. Here's one of them. That's the rear one right here. They both go up to a module right up in here. This module right there. If you can see that. It's a sensor. Is all it is. So this line right here is running up into that sensor. And then you've got the other one on the front end of the of the DPF filter. You can see it right there. It's running into the other side of that module. So what that sensor sends to the ECM is what triggers the the uh, regen. And it's as simple as that. And then you start the uh, then, then you start the regen process inside of your DPF filter. It's a fairly simple operation when it's working right. People that have issues with it, it usually has something to do with the, uh, the DPF filter either being plugged up because of that sensor being screwed up. Uh, sometimes the flash that they put on the, on the vehicle is wrong. I've heard of having old flashes 
and the DPF just was was getting the wrong signal and uh, from the ECM. But you also have while we're in here, if we can if we can take a look at it, it's a little, you've got your here's your your sensor here. I don't know if you can see it right here. This is your outlet. That's your EGT3 right here. Exhaust gas temp 3. That also goes into that plug right there along with these lines if you can see that. It's a little awkward for me to get, get a good view of it. But outlet, this is the front of the truck. That way is the front of the truck. So this is the outlet sensor. This is the inlet sensor over here. They both go into this module right here. So you're reading differential pressure. And when we're looking at my gauge that shows differential pressure, that's what we're looking at, the difference between the pressure on this, this one here, and the pressure on this one. And it's a very, very low pressure. As you could see, when we were idling, it was about a .02, something like that, very low. So that's uh, obviously a very sensitive sen sensor, and if it if it went out of whack, it probably wouldn't take a whole lot to to throw things uh, you know out of kelter. But mine's been working fine, and most people most people don't have issues with it. The only issues people have is when they don't run their truck long enough to heat it up and give it a chance to finish its regen. And uh, I mean, e even if you shut it down early, it'll start regen in the minute you crank it back up, even when it's cold. It doesn't mess around. So it's very hard to plug this this filter up, but I've heard of it being done. So never say never. But uh, anyway, that's what you got there. And I hope this clears up some of the confusion about how these things work and what makes them work. And until next time, adios.